Sports Talk with Player Agent 3. He is finally here. <laughs> My OG coach, Appalachian State legend, New York City legend, a disciple of Bobby Crimmins, Coach Daryl Robinson. How you doing? I'm doing well, man. It's a, it's a pleasure to be with you, man. You know, you know people, people don't realize the how far you and I go back. Right. Um, yeah. It's a pleasure to be with you. Yeah, I appreciate it. I, I really appreciate this, man. I first want to start off, um, talk about your upbringing in New York. Came from a, uh, a family, mom and dad were home. Um, grew up in Brooklyn, New York. Loved baseball as a youngster. Um, <clears throat> if you had told me I was going to be a basketball player or told some other people, they probably would have laughed at you because they thought I ended up playing baseball. Oh, really? My first love, yeah. Okay, so, you know, being that, you know, most people consider New York the mecca in terms of basketball, how was that playing basketball uh, when you were growing up? If you played baseball, I'm sure you played basketball as well, but how was it? Well, we, we played sports year-round. I mean, we were outdoors mm -hmm. playing football, baseball, basketball year-round. But as I got a little older, you know, um, the guys I admired, uh, the cooler guys they were playing basketball so that, okay. that kind of helped me lean towards uh -huh. playing basketball so who were some of the guys that you that you looked up to coming up um you know basketball i mean it could be basketball football baseball but sports wise you know growing up in a place like new york you know most people think about basketball they don't they don't think about baseball they don't think about football so who are some of the athletes that you admired growing up in in new york city well, i was a new york met fan so okay uh, and, and i know i'm dating myself some but people like Keon <laughs> jones and, and tommy ag and, and and ed charles i got to meet uh probably one of the best shortstops i ever thought there was in bud harrison i got to meet him face to face and as a youngster and, and i was just in awe when i met him but um as i got a little older i became a new york Knicks fan and uh, Clyde Frazier, Earl Monroe, okay. uh, Willis Reed, and those guys. Um, I'll never forget uh, when they won the championship in 69. I got had a really good friend. And he and I, uh, we were each in our own apartments, but we ended up coming out in the street screaming like uh, we had just won a world championship ourselves. Mm. Now, if, if I can recall, I think it was, I don't know if it was when I first met you or, or years ago, you told me that you played, um, when you played high school basketball, you played with uh, Vinnie Johnson or you played against him. Uh, talk about talk about that a little bit. We were in the same class um, and Vinnie was always a freak. Vinnie was, I don't know, I was taller than he I'm 6'4". Vinnie was probably 6'1 at best, but he had long arms um, and, and I mean, he could just score the basketball. Uh, I saw Vinny destroy a lot of people I admired playing against him. We didn't play at the same high school, but, but during the summer circuit, we would play against each other. And um, he destroyed some people that I really, that I played with, that I really admired. And mm -hmm. that's how I got to know Vinny. Okay. So take, take me back to the summer times when you were growing up playing basketball um, in New York. Of course, a lot of legends come from New York. Um, who are some of the who are some of the guys that you competed against? Um, you have guys like Dr. J, Connie Hawkins, um, Tiny Nate Archibald. Did you run into those guys coming up? Um, playing no, those, those in guys York? were older than me. Okay. The, the guys that I ran into, like Warren B, Warren B, Free yeah, was yeah. a couple of years ahead mm -hmm. of me. Uh, Bernard King was a, a year ahead of me. Of course, Albert was a little bit younger. Albert King. Um, you know, a lot of guys you might not, I mean, New York City people would, would really know the name Ricky Free, um, uh, Russell Saunders, um, 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 Alex Booby Eldridge was, was okay. in, the yeah. in, in the Bronx. Alex went to, to Marquette. Tony Price went to Penn. Uh, Bobby Willis. A lot of those guys were like all city type guys, but you know, they didn't have the college careers that, you know, mm -hmm. that made them household names. Mm -hmm. You can turn it. Turn your uh, turn it over. Yeah. Turn the mic over. Um, I want to throw a name at you. Um, and and he's he's probably older, but I'm sure, um, you you, you know you, you probably ran across him um coming up in New York. But um, Earl Manigault. Um, 
you know, if, what type of what type of player was he, and did you did you get a chance to play against him? I don't know if he's older or if you guys are he's, around he's, the same. He's considerably older than I. Okay. I think by the time I got saw him play, he was probably done. Okay. All right. Um, mm. He, uh, I think, by the time I got to see him play, I think the street life had uh, had, had, had had gotten him pretty much. Mm. Mm. Did you get a chance to play uh, in the Rucker? I played in the Rucker one time. In the Rucker one time, I played at West 4th Street one time. And uh, by the time I played in the Rucker, it was not, I, I watched the Rucker with Julius Irvin, Fly Williams, and I, I did mention him earlier. Um, uh, yeah, and, and you know, other NBA guys would come in and play. Um, by the time I played in the Rucker, it had kind of faded a little bit. Um, for a, for a few years, it was down, then it came back. But by the time I played, it wasn't the rucker that you know most people in the country know. Of. Okay. Um, when did you know, Coach? W when did you know that okay, I can do this on a college level? When you were in high school, when did you know that you know what I can do this on the next level? It was probably my junior year. I played JV as a sophomore. Um, high school was. 10, 11, and 12 when I came through. So junior high school was, was seven to nine. So I, I went to jun Summers Junior High School in Brooklyn at, from seventh through ninth grade. And I went to South Shore High School from 10 through 12, probably my junior year. Uh, and, and probably didn't play a lot. I might've played, I don't know, 10, 12 minutes a game as a junior. But by then I knew, uh, I thought I had a chance to play college basketball. Now, what, what were some of, you ended up going to uh, Appalachian State, which we'll talk about in a few minutes, but um, what other schools recruited? I'm, I'm sure some schools in the um, tri-state area recruited you, but um, what, and if there were, what were those schools? Well, first of all, let me, let me say there was no Big East. The Big East came maybe two years after I graduated. So St. John's was, was these schools, St. John's and Syracuse were the schools that the ballers wanted to go to. Um, LIU, Manhattan, Florida, uh, those guys recruited me pretty hard. Jim Valvano was at our owner. He probably recruited me the hardest. Um, but by by mid senior year, I kind of felt like I wanted to get out of the city. So um, Bobby Clemens came in, and uh, I fell in love with Coach Clemens, and my parents fell in love with him. That's that's how that ended. So now, now was that because um, now I, I remember uh, talking to Kenny Anderson and he was um, telling me that you know because Bobby is a New Yorker, did I mean did that have an effect on you as well in it terms did, of did. you know it the did. reason why you made the decision? His vernacular, the way he talked, the way he, Bobby had swag, mm -hmm. um, and, and 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 mothers fell in love with him, um, but I don't know. He just he, and I listened to the Kenny Anderson interview also. Yeah, you know, he just kind of let me know that he's gonna let me play, and and uh, he's gonna put the ball in my hand. And he did tell me, if, you know, if you're staking it up, you know, we're gonna have to go another route. But you know, if you're getting it done, I ain't recruiting nobody else in your position to your agenda. Okay. This word. Okay. So talk about that experience at App State. You're in a a, a different world per se, coming from uh, Brooklyn to Boone. Understatement. <laughs> so talk about. Talk about that 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 four year experience and um, how how did that impact you as a, a person and as a player? Well, going back to high school, South Shore High School was a predominantly white high school. I was in the third graduating class, um, so coming from the hood, um, we were bussed out to um, an area where there were not many of us. Um, so there were a lot of, of racial issues, particularly in years one through four. Now they did they did ease up a little bit by the time I was a junior and senior and seemed to be getting along a little bit better. But there were times when you really couldn't go into the bathroom by yourself. Because there's no telling who might be in there and what might happen. And this is in Boom. This, no, this, oh, this, this is, is in, in okay. South Shore. Okay. So, uh, and I'm saying this as a precursor yeah. to Boom. South Shore prepared me to, to deal with a boom where there were 12,000, 13,000 students and maybe 500 minorities, maybe 500. Um, so South Shore helped me and to, to, to prepared me to, you know, to, to get out there in the real world um, and to be able to deal with people from, from different areas. However, 
coming from New York City to Tribune, North Carolina was <laughs> um, and then the first few months were really rough. And, and, and you know, being from New York and always having something to do and, um, and socially it, it, was, it was tough. We leaned on each other because Bobby brought five New Yorkers down that year. So, and, and probably one of my best friends um, to this very day, we were roommates for four years. And uh, you know, we, so we carried each other through. Um, I met my wife, I've been married 38 years. Um, so I met her there my freshman year. So, I mean, but I would not trade the experience being in Boone for anything. Um, as a matter of fact, you know, talking about those first few months were, 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 were difficult. Well, that first summer, second summer, and third summer, I had an apartment there during the summer. So I'd come home for, go back to New York City for a few weeks and I'd go back. Mm -hmm. And actually, when I played professionally overseas for a couple of years, I had a, a, a summer home there. Okay, so at that point, of course, you had a uh, you had a pretty a pretty solid well solid is an understatement in terms of uh, being an app state because you were inducted into the Hall of Fame. But when did you know? At what point in your college basketball career did you know that you could play on a professional level? I think as a freshman, I probably was disillusioned, but I thought I could play there. I mean, I thought I was I was good enough then. Um, I mean, and, and I had a, a, a really, really good freshman year, probably surprised myself, but I had some pro aspirations then. Okay. Freshman. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, and I want you to correct me if I'm wrong. Um, a lot of people probably don't know this, um, but you were drafted into the, into the NBA by the Portland Trailblazers. Right. Um, and what year was that? 79. 79. And if I'm not mistaken, they won the NBA championship in 78. And that was the year um, Bill Walton, Bill Walton, and Jack Ram Lionel Hollins. Jack Ramsey was the coach, right? Yeah, Jack Ramsey was the coach. Mm -hmm. um, Johnny Davis. I mean, they had they had a really good team, and Portland, Portland loved them. Yeah. You know, a lot of people are surprised when I tell them that you were drafted into the NBA. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if if you know you never talk about that, but when when you were drafted, what was that like for you, and what was it like uh, for your family? I mean, because a lot of that's a lot of kids, um, you know, strive to get drafted into the NBA, and, and it, it, it became a reality for you. You know, how, how did that affect I you? I mean, I can't put it into words. Um, but it's funny how I found out. Now you, you people, you know, you, you got the internet and all that stuff, but uh, we happened to have a basketball camp going on in Boone. Coach Clemens had a, a, a team camp going on, and I happened to be there working it. And he called me over and he said, um, you need to go upstairs, you got a phone call. And it was important to let me know they had drafted me in the forefront. Okay. Um, so, and, I mean, it, yeah, it was like, I was in heaven. I, you know, like, for, 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 for three or four days I was in heaven. Um, you know, until I got on that plane and got out there and realized I had some work to do. But um, yeah, it, it, it's something that, that I'm proud of today. Now, did you actually play in, in any, um... NBA games because um, if I'm not mistaken, I know you told me you played summer league. Right, with, played um, in summer league. That's, that was held in LA and Inglewood mm -hmm. then. Um, um, I got cut at the end of the summer league. Okay. Yeah. Um, matter of fact, talking about Jack Ramsey, mm -hmm. you know, he, and, and, you know he, uh, we like a lot of things you do. Blah blah blah. They had five guards on no cut contracts, um, and they drafted Jim Paxson. Um, so, so you were drafted the same the same year with Jim Paxson? Right, or? Not John Paxson. Right, I remember brother. Jim. Yeah, I remember the older brother. Yeah, yeah. and he didn't come to camp. Um, he was a first round pick. So, mm -hmm. you know, he and his agent were negotiating while we were out there sweating and, and, and trying to compete. Uh -huh. um, but, so yeah, they had five guards on no cut and they drafted he also in front of me. He was the first pick. Um, I think they drafted a couple of forwards and then they drafted me. Okay. so. After that experience, of course, you you, you went overseas. Right. Um, talk about you know going overseas. That experience, um, being drafted in the NBA, but having to humble yourself and go play, go play overseas in Europe. Okay, you so know, before, talk about that experience. Before before I went overseas, I, I went back to app. I had a couple of uh, credits that I had to I had to get um, for graduation. So I went back and um, you know I, I got my degree, 
And I was invited on tour to Spain, and, and, and you're probably familiar with these. They yeah. You on tours. Yeah. And, and other teams are watching and all that stuff. So uh, went to Spain. We were over there probably about six weeks. Had a great tour. Um, had a couple of teams show some interest. Um, but, but I went back to boat after all of that. Then I got a couple of phone calls to go over. I had, I had some, uh, I had a couple of contact offers, Spain, France, and Israel. Um, and ended up taking the one in Israel. And I was over there for five years. And led the league in scoring my first two years. I think I finished third in scoring my third year. But yeah, I had, I had a really good career over there. How many countries did you play for when, when you were over in Europe? Uh, I, I, played, I, I played in France a little bit for maybe a half a season. Um, and I played in Israel. That's it. Okay. So you play in Europe. Um, what happens after that? You know, how, how did you how did you end up in Raleigh? Okay. So um, my son was born. I played one more year when he was born, and I was making decent money. Nothing like. Um, Nothing like the, the guys are making over there now. I mean, I mean, you know, pretty, pretty decent money. But my son was born, and you know, I kind of felt like, you know, I just need to go ahead and turn the page. Um, you know, I was able to to purchase some things, a home and stuff, and just get a start in life. And um, my wife uh, was a teacher here in Raleigh, so we ended up buying. I actually bought a home here in Raleigh. Didn't even live in it for a year. Um, she was up in Boone, um, having my son Shawan, or, you know, she was pregnant with my son Shawan. And we bought a home and I went back overseas. Um, and then that final year is when we moved into the home. Okay. Right. And and I yeah. loved Raleigh because we played state every year when I was at that. And we always had a good time when we came to Raleigh. So I always thought okay. it was a nice place. All right. So I want to go back a little bit. I, I met you when I was, uh, I was around 14 years old. I was a freshman in high school. And um, did you know when when you were at Wake Forest, Wake Forest Rosa High School, did you know then that you wanted to coach or when did, when did that when did that thought come into your head? You know what? I think I want to get into coaching. When I got the job, the, the physical education job at Wake Forest, I was coaching at Hale High School. Yes, now, yes, yes. I remember. I, yeah, I, I didn't. I, um, I didn't want it. I had my degree in education. wasn't sure I wanted to teach, so I was running a couple of restaurants, and you know this job got, got off to me at, at Hale High School, and I did that for a couple of years, and I was like, man, I think I, you know, I think I'd like to do this and be around kids full time instead of you know two three hours a day. So when the job opened up at Wake Forest. I knew they had a legend there in, in, in Larry Lindsey, and he was a great coach. Um, so, I, you know, I, coaching at Wake Forest, I, I didn't think, you know, I, I knew that was a, a super long shot, but by then I didn't know I wanted to coach. Mm -hmm. Be it on the college level or on the high school level. All right. So you you pretty much, you've carved out a pretty good career as a high school coach here um, in, in North Carolina. What, what type of um, impact did that have on you? Being able, being able to have the longevity as a high school coach and you know impacting a lot of kids, um, especially in this area. Um, I left Wake Forest probably when you were a sophomore, maybe a junior, I don't know. Um, and I got a job offer at Coastal Carolina, which was a great experience for me. Right. We um, the year I was there, we got to play in Hawaii. Played at Arkansas, we played at Missouri, you know, just they call guarantee games. Mm -hmm. And a lot of that stuff I was naive to. I didn't realize. I'm thinking coach thinks we really got a chance to beat these guys. And we were pretty good. <clears throat> but um, you know, we were getting paid, like Arkansas paid us fifty grand to come. Uh, Missouri paid us fifty grand to come. Uh, Hawaii gave us some money to come. Right. Um, and we were competitive, but but you know, we didn't beat those guys. But that that year we went to the NCAA tournament. We won our conference, won our conference tournament. We got to play against the Fab Five. So it was a great year. The guy that I coached uh, was the head coach, Russ Bergman, uh, was really, really knowledgeable, taught me a lot. Um, and then the Leesville job opened. 
while I was at Coastal. And I had some people that were um, actually some people from Wake Forest. I don't even know if you know this. There was a, a parent from Wake Forest that got a physical education, education job at um, Leesville. And she told the principal about me and he asked me if I had any interest, brought me in for an interview. And Leesville was a brand new school, had not opened yet. Mm -hmm. So um, it opened in 93, 94. And um, I was there from, from 93, 94 through 2007. Probably the best high school, the best time in my life, the best high school job I've ever had. Mm -hmm. Now you left um, and you coached at App State as well. At what point was this after the Leesville job or yes. it was before? Actually, it was during the Leesville job. Um, oh. After my son graduated in 2002, um, I stayed one more year with, with a kid named DJ Thompson. Yeah. And he's like a son to me now also. Um, but but um, Appalachian called and wanted to know if I'd be interested in coming up and coaching. And, and um, of course, they were interested in DJ also. So, um, so in 2007, 2008, I went up to App for a year. Um, I mean, I liked it. It's, uh, App is always gonna be home to me. I got DJ off to a good start, but I've always wanted to see my son play in the ACC. I mean, mm -hmm. he, he is playing at Clemson. And, yeah. And, 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 and I think the, 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 the deal breaker for me was, we were playing at Furman, I want to say at four o'clock, and Carolina was playing at Clemson at 12 noon, same day. And I couldn't go watch him play. As a matter of fact, while the game was on TV, the coach brought the team into my room to watch some video on Furman. So not only could I not be at the game, I couldn't even couldn't watch even it on watch. TV. And I'm, you know, I'm just thinking to myself, you know, I've been, all, all this time coaching my son from 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 nine years old or before getting a chance to see him play in the ACC and I got to see him play three times that year okay so you know it was like you know something my daughter's gonna be a senior next year I can't watch my son play I think I'm going back and Leesville welcome me back yeah yeah I, I, I remember that time um, and I'm sure it was tough um, and, and actually I want to um I want to stay on that topic in terms of your son Shawan. You coached him. Um, you coached him at Leesville. How? Um, talk about how that impacted you, and what lessons did you learn from 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 that experience, from coaching your son? Because I, I'm pretty sure it was difficult when you have to coach your son. So, can you talk about that and, and some of the lessons you learned from from, from coaching uh, Shawan for four years? Uh, let, let me let me start out by saying I was an idiot because. Um, now, first of all, I tried to shield him from some things, but I also wanted everybody in the world to know that he was not getting any favors. You know, I was harder on him than than, than anyone. Um, I probably went home a few times and, and, and was ashamed of the way I kind of talked to him at times and, and treated him at times. Um, but, I mean, he, we are as close now. I don't think our, our father-son could be closer. Because I probably called him every name in the book. Um, <laughs> um, and I didn't worry about him when he went to college. Because whatever a coach said to him, he heard it. He heard it all, huh? Yeah, he did. So, <laughs> but but, but um, we, we were close by his senior year. You know, I kind of felt like I could just back off. I didn't really do a whole lot of coaching because he, you know, mm -hmm. he, he kind of knew what I was thinking more often than not. Mm -hmm. So by his senior year, I let him go. But at, at the sophomore year, his first year of varsity, um, and his junior year, you know, I coached him up, and, and um, you know, I was hard on him. Mm -hmm. Did you learn anything from that experience? I did. I mm -hmm. did. Um, yeah, I, I, and I looked from 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 my perspective, and I also looked at the way other people dealt with their kids. Um, I learned what 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 I didn't want to be like, you know. And I guess I learned it kind of towards the tail end of of, of his high school career. And I saw a lot of parents that, that were like that, some even worse than than, than I was towards my son. Um, and, 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 you know, so it was a pretty valuable lesson mm -hmm. 
in, in parenting. Mm -hmm. Now, now you you just spoke a few minutes ago about about Shawan playing in the ACC and playing in um, Clemson. What um what went through your mind when um I mean just the fact that he he pretty much followed in your footsteps in terms of playing college basketball. He played he played professional. I mean how I mean what went through your mind to when when you saw that okay my son he's he's following in my footsteps and I got a I got a chance to see him play in probably the best conference in America. Just the recruitment process was um, was unexpected. Um, I, I, I learned this from Coach Tremens and other coaches along the way. You know, I always kind of kept the expectations low. Mm -hmm. So when a UNC Wilmington or a UNC Greensboro or a Winthrop, Richmond to a certain extent, when they were recruiting him, I was like in heaven. And then we started hearing from some Big Tens and some ACCs, and so I was blown away. And, and, and you know, I don't, I don't want to talk too much about it, but you know, I was coaching him at the Peach Jam one time, and I'll never forget. I missed the first game. I don't know what I was teaching a driver's ed class or something, and um, I got there the second night. They they beat Sean May and then the first night, and the second night we were playing against a team <clears throat> from Oakland, and. You know, he had, a, he had a pretty good game. And we were very, very good, by the way. I mean, we had Raymond Felton and Shabbat Randolph and Eric Williams. and oh, yeah. So yeah. we had a uh, traveling circus because we had coaches all over the place. But um, unexpectedly, after the game, and I'll never forget this moment, there were like 40 coaches wait in line to talk to me. And I had some uh, friends. Kevin Keats was there. He was coaching at Marshall at the time. Uh -huh. And um, he got tired of waiting in line. He just, you know, he said, "Man, I don't want, I don't want to recruit your son. I just want to let you know, I'll be here and here later. You know, mm -hmm. later on, we need to get together." But there were 40 coaches lined up to talk, and, and it just kind of blew me away. I mean, it was unexpected. Mm -hmm. Now, when you guys, I know you invited me to a couple of his, um, his, uh, his ACC games. Um, you know, just being on that stage. I mean, did you get any type of chills? Um, when he, when, especially when they come to play Duke or, you know, when they come to play, uh, Carolina, um, I mean, was that like a, you know, uh, a lot, a lot of nerves. First of yeah. all, watching the game with my wife, I, I would try to get, try to get away from <laughs> get her because she, she's, uh, and, and, and I would get nervous, mm -hmm. probably more nervous than when I was coaching because I had absolutely no control mm -hmm. and, you know. Knowing my son as well as I know him, I could see some of the emotions, some of the frustrations, um, you know, some of the celebrations. I mean, all the ups and downs. People, and you know, you play. You know, a lot of people think you just roll the ball out and play, but yeah. you know, it, 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 he ended up not playing for the coach that recruited him. So you know, he had to win him over. In a Shire, lot of ways. right? Shy recruited yeah. him, and the Shire got fired the year after. Um, to end up playing for Oliver Purnell, and. Um, now, that's a whole other story in itself, but you know, he had to win Oliver Purnell over, um, and I don't think he really won him over. Maybe, maybe mid junior year. Mm -hmm. Okay, a couple more questions, Coach, and I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna let you get out of here. Who's the best player that you've ever played against? And, and you can go back to when you was in high school. You can do college. You can you can do professional. But who's the best player that you played against? In high school, Vinnie Johnson, um, Jeff Houston, um, and I'm talking about my class. Now, mm -hmm. you know, I played against Bernard King, um, but you know, in my class coming up, um, and, and talking about Bernard, when he came down here and did what he did at Tennessee, it blew me away. I, Bernard was good. There's no question he was good, mm -hmm. but when he came down and was scoring 40 a game, it just blew me away. But Vinnie Johnson in high school, um, Jeff Houston, who got some NBA time with the Knicks and Cleveland, um, I'd say in high school there. Um, college, probably a guy that a, a lot of people don't know about named Rod Griffin, played at Wake Forest. He was okay. a first round pick by the Denver Nuggets and ended up getting cut. Um, I don't think he ever played a okay. regular season game for him. But he was a beast in college. And I played against Magic in the summer. Okay, out in Inglewood? Yeah. 
Okay. Yeah, yeah. And it's funny. You know, the night before, I don't know, we played against Utah Jazz or somebody, uh-huh. the gym is half full. The next night was Magic's first game. And that's when they, we, we played against them. And, uh, and he gave you some work. Hanging from the rafters. <laughs> uh, yeah, he did some work. But you know, I, I did okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, I had a pretty good camp when I was out in Portland. I probably averaged about 16 a game. Okay. Uh, out of the summer league. Mm-hmm. So uh, I didn't feel bad about, you know, the way I played. I just knew the situation being being as it was, you know, I, about maybe halfway through the summer league, I realized that I was probably auditioning for some other teams. Mm. So just let me go back to this real quick. When you, once you, once you, uh, once you were cut from Portland and you started playing basketball overseas, you, did you have any aspirations of coming back? I came back and I was with New Jersey. Okay. Was um, this, uh, this was after my first year in Israel. Okay. And, um, didn't play well. Didn't, didn't play as well as I liked, but they, you know, at the rookie, they had 17 guards. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's funny. Um, and, and not, not to, not to, to, to shoot at anybody, but they had se- we had 17 guards. Uh, a guy named Darwin Cook, who was um, not really popular then, played really well. Matter of fact, he made the team. And the other guy that made the team that surprised me, and along with a whole lot of folks, was Rory Sparrow. Rory Sparrow, I remember that name. Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. But, yeah, I, I, I knew I could compete with those guys, but about halfway through the camp, I just knew they didn't look good. Okay, so after that, you after just that, like... After that, I was like, I'm you just... know something? I'm, I'm tired of getting my feelings hurt. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to go back overseas and, and, and make a little bit of money I can make there. And, you know, and, and the education is just... Being over there, man, was an extension of my education. Mm-hmm. Um, just learning, learning other cultures, and learning how, or watching how Americans come over there and can't coexist. Or uh, just a lot of Americans came over there and, and were balling, playing really well, but socially they just couldn't do it. I mean, mm-hmm. they they come over there for a month and be like, "Let me out of here." I, I love. Couldn't it. adjust. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Last question, coach. What's wrong with high school basketball today? That's a tough one. I think high school basketball, and, and, and it's tough. When I was coaching, let's say from, from the early 90s through the 2000s, we got kids as high school coaches, we got them ready for the summer. I think it's flipped now. I think the summer matters more. Uh, the travel, the AAU thing, I think that matters more to the kids. Um, and, and, and in a lot of ways, rightfully so, because during the summer, you can play in front of 25 coaches. You're not gonna do that in high school unless you're a stud. All right. Um, I just think not, and it's not it's not a, a, a North Carolina or New York or I just think kids have so much more to do. There's so many more streets they can go up now. You got the internet, you got all kind of stuff that other things that they, they like to do. Um, kids are not they, they're just not to me they're just not into basketball as much. Now, now, now you got those diehards that really yeah. love it and want to stay in the gym all the time, but I don't think you see those as much as you used to. Yeah, they want it, but you don't see them in the parks anymore. No, you, you don't, don't. You don't see the. No, you know, no. you don't see the, the kids having fun no. um, playing basketball no. in the park, and every now everything is everybody has a, a trainer. Yeah, yeah. You know? um, do you think that 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 is affecting the game? A lot of these because you got a, a thousand and one skill developed trainers right now. I mean, I mean some of them are, are good. No, you have you have some uh, you have yeah. some some pretty good ones, but there's more uh, money in bad basketball than there yeah. is in good basketball. Mm-hmm. And you know, it's, and it started, and, and Marshall Hamilton, bless his heart, he's no longer with us. He was the athletic director, somebody I truly admired at Leesville. Um, but you know, he said he noticed it as an athletic director in the soccer culture, um, how parents were becoming overbearing, over-involved. And he said it was coming in basketball. He told me this in the early 90s. And I saw it actually happen during that time when and, and parents wanting to hire trainers. Um, parents, uh, you know, when I grew up, a coach was somebody 
and, and you too. I mean, I, you know, I remember you as a young student. A coach was somebody you know, and you, you, you listened to his every word, and um, especially if you knew he cared. Um, but it, it, it got to the point where parents were coaching their kids from the stands. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and I, you know, I see it now. Mm. Do you think that drove you away from from? There's no question. There's no question. Um, as much as I love the game now, you know, I'm, I'm Shawan's assistant coach. Um, but yeah, the parent, the parent involvement, the parent questioning, um, uh, it just kind of, kind of chipped away at me. And also the kids not being as. Um, when I was at Leesville, you know, I could, I could talk on and on. Kids were so loyal. Um, you know, first of all, they, they, they wanted to know how much you cared, not so much how much you knew. Mm-hmm. If, they, if, if they knew you cared, man, kids would run through a wall. Now, I had some tough kids at these man, that mm-hmm. were not what you would call, you know, college-type players, but I probably had 30 or 40 kids playing college when I was at these man. Mm-hmm. Not all Division yeah. one, you know, but I always told kids, if, if you want to play college basketball, we'll find somewhere for you. Now, I'm not going to call Roy Williams, if you, <laughs> you know, if, if you're not a Division one player, but... You know, we'll find somewhere for you to play. But kids would run through a wall at one time. But that started being met with some resistance towards the end. Um, yeah. For whatever reason. And, and, and mm-hmm. So, yeah, I kind of felt like, you know, maybe I was getting a little little older and, you know, didn't didn't didn't, didn't uh, have the relationships I had with them. At one time I tried, but, uh, but yeah, the parents and, and, the, and the kids changed. Yeah. So what's next for Coach Rob? What's the next? What's, what's next for you? To, to help my son and and to to enjoy the heck out of my granddaughters um <laughs> i've got three and i've got another one found out yesterday we've got another granddaughter on the way um where the boys at man what, what? You, you don't have any grandsons i do not man. <laughs> and Shawan's scared to have any more because he said he's afraid it's going to be a girl and joy the way she's feeling now, she's still dealing with some morning sickness and that type okay. of thing. She's like, no, she's done. But, you know, maybe I can uh, give her a little incentive to try again. All right. Well, Coach, I appreciate you coming through, man. This is a, a big time honor for me. Um, is there anything you want to say? Anything, something that people don't know about you um, before we get out of here? No. And, and, and I, I want you to know it's an honor for me. Um, I have a, just a... Uh, appreciated and, and, and sat back sit back in awe at the way you've grown as a person I always knew that you know you, you had a humble heart and, and, and you were a good person but just to watch people like you and my former players um, grow up and, and become good adults good parents um, it's a blessing I appreciate it man I definitely appreciate it sports talk with player agent 3 coach Rob